What's going on folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and today I want to talk to you about an awesome third-party supplement from a good friend of mine and possibly a friend of yours, Mr. Rex. Mr. Rex is a YouTuber that does all sorts of monster lore and other things uh, here on the YouTubes. Also just had a very successful uh, Kickstarter just end for Sands of Doom, which we talked about a couple of times here uh, that are, again, a cool level 1 to 11 campaign, which has some really awesome things tied to it. But I also just wanted to take this opportunity to say that I'm going to continue to try and promote awesome third-party content that is really good quality stuff out there, whether it's things that uh, friends of the channel, people breaking out into creating content, or things that I've worked on. Again, look for something coming out on Cobalt Press's Tome of Beasts 3 very soon. Uh, and again, we'll continue to explore other RPGs and things as well going forward. So... At the top of the video description, as well as a pinned comment, will be a reference link uh, that really, if you go and pick up anything uh, from Mr. Rex's store, uh, it will let, you know, the link will let him know that you came from Nerd Immersion. There's a couple of options here, right? We can see there's an adventure, there is Monster Classes 3, Armor Redesign, what they don't tell you about magic items, and what they don't tell you about Dragon Hordes. And what we're going to be talking about today is what they don't tell you about magic items. This is a 28 page document, but if you're looking for things regarding magic items, this actually does a really cool thing in kind of empowering the players in the part, uh, in the, you know, terms of creating uh, magic items and that you don't actually technically need to have as a DM uh, running the game, you don't need to create uh, shops or things of that nature. This just allows you to uh, go ahead and basically let your players, if they have the ability to do so, craft these items. A couple things I like about it, it, in, it empowers Arcana, which I thought was a cool thing, right? Anybody can basically make one of these magic items, um, and it costs uh, 100 gold pieces uh, worth of enchantment costs per day. Uh, the limit goes up to 200 gold pieces if you're proficient in Arcana and uh, 300 if you have expertise. And then obviously more folks can jump in. Uh, and it also goes on to say if there's like an enchanter or somebody in the town who can make these items, they're considered to have uh, expertise in Arcana. And it has a little bit of a rule of thumb that you can see right here uh, about what kind of gold value of things for people finding them. And then it's they have little rules here about selling them. It also goes about towards the end here of our rebalancing anything found in the DMG as well as providing prices for all of those items as well. And this is kind of the crux of it right here, permanent enchantments. And it talks about what you can do, how you can enchant. And it says any single item can have two minor enchantments or one major and one minor. If you try to add any more beyond that, it automatically fails. Uh, items that are already magical can be enchanted as normal unless they have an effect that's not listed in this book here. Uh, if that's the case, it automatically fails. You cannot replace one enchantment with another without first disenchanting the previous one, which there's rules for that, right? If you want to have an item and you say, okay, I wish I wish it had this, you could disenchant the item, basically bringing it back to neutral and then re-enchant it. Uh, if an enchantment has more expensive tiers of effects, you may upgrade the enchantment to a higher tier with a standard enchanting process. So simplest example of that would be if this item is a plus one and you want to make it a plus two, that happens. You just add, uh, you know, you come up with the, the difference in the gold pieces and enchant it as normal. A uh, weapon, armor, shield, and ammunition enchantments can only be used on weapons, armor, shield, and ammunition, respectively. Object enchantments can be used on anything. I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. Object enchantments on pieces of armor or clothing must be worn for their effects to function. Object enchantments on non-wearable objects must be held in a free hand. Uh, you cannot apply the same enchantment more than once on an object unless the enchantment says you can. Uh, if an enchantment has an attunement requirement, you may not attune to two or more items which hold the same enchantment unless it specifies that you can. An item which has been imbued with two enchantments that require attunement only take up one attunement slot for the player. And I also really like this, that they can be basic, anything that has object enchantment can be applied to your skin as a magical tattoo, which I also really like because it gets around the things if you're... Uh, someone who doesn't want to have items or armor or what have you kind of let you get around that, which is pretty cool. Uh, and here you can see Disenchant is just a flat 3,000 gold piece value. And here are the minor weapon enchantments. I'm not going to go through all of these. 
but we'll kind of speed through and just take a look. But for example, right, a minor enchantment could just be a plus one, plus two, or plus three, and you can see the cost of the value here. So in theory, were someone to have expertise in Arcana in one full day, they could enchant a weapon uh, with, again, with 300 gold pieces to be a plus one. And a lot of these you'll recognize also kind of mimic things you've already seen. Life Stealer, again, this bond lets you call it to you. Uh, we have improved critical, which is pretty self-explanatory. In addition, if it uh, if the result of your attack uh, with this weapon exceeds the target's AC by 10, it's also a critical hit. So that gives you a little bit of benefit to stack, uh, you know, your your attack. Uh, potentially, again, if it's a strength-based thing, stack that up. So rolling higher, 10 higher than their AC makes it an auto crit. There's also brutal brutal critical, again, just adding extra damage dice. Uh, a couple of different options here. Then we have major enchantments, which are basically switching the damage type to something more interesting. Um, it's adding, dealing bonus damage in the form of one of these options here. And again, however many uh, normal extra dice are added is the different tiers here. Uh, we have uh, spell slot, basically adding elemental smiting here, slaying, uh, make additional attacks. Same thing with armor attachments. We have things like Bonding to it, being immune to critical hits while wearing it, giving yourself a bonus to subsequent attacks. I also like some of these take class features and kind of turn them into abilities. Uh, shield, we have just, again, for shields, we have increasing the overall uh, effectiveness of the armor, deflecting things, deflecting elements, redirecting attacks, all pretty standard stuff. And then for the major ones for the armor, we have things like plus one, plus two, plus three. Um... And then again, for objects, we have things like improving ability checks and saving throws, not being able to be targeted by things like detect magic. Um, whenever you cast a healing spell, boosting the healing that it does, better elemental things, having resilience, uh, again, providing proficiency in a saving throw as though the resilient feat, increasing an ability score, and so on. Now we move into the major enchantments. Here we can see regeneration, uh, restoring ability scores, or not ability scores, but like, um, you know, returning something like Channel Divinity to you, um, resistance to magic, elemental immunity, and so on. Special object enchantments, things like binding spells. We can see here's options for choosing different spells to bind to it, being able to summon creatures, and so on. Then we move on to consumables. Again, these are rebalanced pricings for things like potions, as you can see here, which is nice, as well as the concept of a mana potion, something that allows you to get spell slots back, although you're only allowed to do one per day. Uh, some of these, I feel like the pricing is a little bit low to be able to get a D4 plus one spell slots back. Seems like a lot. Um, that's the combined level of spell slots, right? So if you happen to roll a four, that would be five total levels of spell slots. This is a little, seems a little much to me, but either way, we have, again, standard potions and things that we find in the DMG with rebalanced pricing. Uh, same thing again with scrolls with new pricing there, as well as uh, set DCs for them. And then again, readjusted prices and abilities for different poisons, again, found in the DMG. And then here we have the known sort of magic items. And it goes on to say, you can purchase these at any magic shop or craft them uh, yourself, provided you have the required object, a cloak for a cloak of elven kind, for example, and the gold to pay for it. So simple things here, right? Goggle of night. Uh, you know, pretty much what we know them to be costs 300 gold pieces. You could also craft these if you had a set of goggles. Same thing with a wand of magic detection, sending stones, and so on. Here is all of the various things here, whether they're attunement and the cost. And it basically just goes on to provide everything that, uh, well, not everything, but a large majority of the things that you would find kind of in the, uh, the SRD. So there you go. It's a pretty simplistic approach to it, but simple is not a bad thing. So I actually really like it a lot. It's it's I've lamented often, and it doesn't seem like it's going to change anytime soon, that crafting magic items are kind of a funky thing when it comes to 5th edition. So this is a relatively simple and easy way to rectify all of that. And if you were to go and pick this up, you'd be supporting a awesome third-party content creator as well. Uh, and again, this is one of those instances yet again, where we find a third party creator solve the problem that the first party had no intention of ever addressing and probably did it better than they ever will. So a shout out and again to our good friend, Mr. Rex for sponsoring this video. Again, link in the video description. 
Uh, and thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.